This is Mac OS Ken. Apple sets its next earnings call. Talk of new Apple hardware and so much stuff to watch. It is Friday, the 5th of April, 2024. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Apple nerds and financial nerds take note. The quarterly coal raking is set. Apple updated its investor relations page Thursday, setting the date for its second quarter fiscal year 2024 earnings. Numbers will be released after the bell on Thursday, the 2nd of May. Look for that press release around 1.30 p.m. Pacific, 4.30 Eastern. Then gather around some streaming device for the color and Q&A call between financial analysts and Apple execs. Expect vague comments on the first couple of months of Apple Vision Pro adoption, takes on strength or weakness in China, and teases a plenty regarding upcoming AI announcements. You can hear the call as it happens on Apple's site. It'll be made available as a podcast soon after. Bloggers will blog, tutors will toot, then we'll hit highs and lows right here the following day. Regarding this week's earthquake in Taiwan, a piece Thursday from Bloomberg answered a couple of interesting questions. How did so few people die in the nation's strongest quake in 25 years? And how is TSMC's production resumption plan going? On the first question, the report says technological advancements in Taiwan appear to have kept damage and casualties relatively low after the 7.4 magnitude quake struck the island's east coast early Wednesday. The government revised building codes and other regulations after a 1999 tumbler that killed more than 2,400 people. The death toll from this week's quake has moved up to 10. Bloomberg says 642 people were trapped or cut off because of road closures and debris as of Thursday afternoon. As for TSMC, Apple's chip-making partner was back to more than 80% as of Thursday. If things go as expected, it'll be 100% by the time you get this. Citing no damage to its most critical chip-making equipment... Bloomberg had the firm indicating that it expected its most advanced factory to reach full recovery later in the day yesterday. More signs of new iPads on the relatively near horizon. A piece from Cult of Mac says a couple of unknown iPads have reportedly turned up on the certification site for the Bureau of Indian Standards. According to the report, the Indian Bureau certifies products so they can be released in the country That certification is required before tablets and other such devices can be sold on the subcontinent. Cult of Mac suspects the machines are a standard iPad and its cellular counterpart, though nothing in the Bureau's listing states that. As for when new iPads might make the scene, the latest rumor from Bloomberg has them hitting in early May. Speaking of Bloomberg and rumors... The business site ran a piece Wednesday saying that Apple is working on personal robotics. Said to be born of Apple's now-abandoned car initiative, the piece says engineers at the Cupertino company have been exploring a mobile robot that can follow users around their homes. Get a dog. What's the point of a robot that can follow you around? Communications? Maybe? Honestly, that part's not clear. People who might know aren't saying because, shh, it's a secret. Is this anything about which to get excited? Eh? I mean, yes, it's fun to think about Apple designing a robot wandering around your house. When its AI brain goes crazy and kills me, I'll take comfort in the fact that the robo hands choking the life out of me were fashioned by some of the brightest design minds on the planet. May never happen, though. Apple might do a lot of work, and it will certainly learn a lot if it does. But Apple spent years working on a television that never came to market, followed by years working on a car 
that never came to market. There is little reason to doubt that Apple is working on robotics. There is also little reason to believe we will ever have an Apple robot in our homes. It would be cool, though. If you're in Apple's public beta testing program, you've got a job to do. One day after the release of several developer betas, a couple of pieces from Mac Rumors say Apple has released the first public betas of iOS 17.5, iPadOS 17.5, and macOS Sonoma 14.5. Most of the 2024 iOS updates have been tied to compliance with the European Union's Digital Markets Act. For example, we heard earlier this week that the developer beta of iOS 17.5 makes way for apps to be downloaded from developer websites in Europe. Ostensibly, that'll widen app distribution channels, which are currently limited to third-party marketplaces and Apple's own App Store. Now, there is talk of another new feature for the iPhone operating system. A report from iDownload blog says iOS 17.5 expands the found moving with you privacy alerts to third-party trackers like Tile to prevent unwanted tracking. Any way it might. Such messaging is currently limited to Apple's AirTag, AirPods, and other devices in Apple's Find My network accessory program. But the piece says hints in code suggest the OS may expand tracking alerts to third-party item trackers. The headline says, brings the expanded messaging. The body of the piece says, might. Still, it seems like a strong might. Last year, both Apple and Google pledged to fight unauthorized tracking through the use of such devices... That said, iDownload blog is non-committal about when this feature will go live, putting it somewhere between the spring's release of iOS 17.5 and this fall's anticipated release of iOS 18. Apple TV Plus has added more extra movies to its offerings. Last month, says a piece from Mac Rumors, Apple added over 50 movies to its back catalog of content for a limited time, Now it has added nearly 30 more. Again, the titles run the gamut, from classics like The Godfather and Forrest Gump, to comedies like Ghostbusters and Crazy Rich Asians, historical dramas like 42 and Dunkirk, and action films like Transformers, and the first three movies in the John Wick series. The movies are available for just four or eight weeks, according to the report, depending on the title, Subscribers in the States can find the films on the Apple TV app in the section labeled New to Apple TV Plus this month. From Some Things Old to Some Things New, three notable titles hit Apple TV Plus this week. I'm a couple days behind on this one, but the second season of the Meyer Rudolph comedy series Loot is back underway. The second season starts a year after Molly Wells played by Rudolph, settles her very public divorce from tech billionaire John Novak, played by Adam Scott. Then we find her thriving in her role as the head of her philanthropic organization, the Wells Foundation. The first two episodes of the second season actually hit Apple TV Plus this past Wednesday. One new episode will drop every Wednesday through the 29th of May. If you're looking for something with a bit more grit, the Colin Farrell detective drama Sugar starts its run today. Describing the show, Apple says Farrell stars as John Sugar, an American private investigator on the heels of the mysterious disappearance of Olivia Siegel, the beloved granddaughter of legendary Hollywood producer Jonathan Siegel. As Sugar tries to determine what happened to Olivia, he will also unearth Siegel family secrets, Some very recent, others long buried. Others starring in the show include Kirby, Amy Ryan, James Cromwell, Nate Cordry, and a host of others. The first three episodes of Sugar hit Apple TV Plus today. Following episodes will hit on following Fridays through the 10th of May. 
And finally today, an anticipated documentary for Apple TV Plus finally makes its way to your living room. After a premiere at this year's Sundance Film Festival, the documentary Girl State has landed on the Cupertino streamer. From the people who brought you the politically focused documentary Boy State, Apple says Girl State follows 500 teenage girls from across Missouri as they gather for a week-long immersion in an elaborate laboratory of democracy. They build a government from the ground up, campaign for office, and form a Supreme Court to weigh the most divisive issues of the day. The backdrop of Girl State is a country deep in democratic crisis, with civil discourse and electoral politics increasingly fragile under extreme political polarization. As questions of race and gender equality in a representational democracy reach a fever pitch, these young women confront the complicated paths women must navigate to build political power. The film is directed and produced by Academy Award-winning filmmakers Jesse Moss and Amanda McBain under the banner of Academy Award winner Davis Guggenheim's Concordia Studio. Girl State is available to stream now on Apple TV+. Before I let you go, I'd like to remind you of another show. This week on The Checklist, brought to you by Secure Mac. After months of romance scams and AI worries, episode 370 covers a simple data breach. It's like a breath of stale yet accessible air. Sensitive info on over 70 million past and current customers of AT&T has ended up floating around the internet for maybe as much as six years. What do we know and what can you do? Find out on checklist number 370. You can catch that at securemac.com slash checklist or wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at Patreon. Dot com slash macOS can advertising handled by Backbeat Media online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways info at macOS can.com or call 716 780 4080. Until next time. That is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.